Let's jump to this story we got from the Daily Caller. Quote, we're already in a civil war. Billy Porter sounds off on anti-transgender legislation across the country. This is uh, an actor who appeared on The View, and he said, we're already in a civil war. It's a civil war of the mind. They're trying to take your mind. And I felt like that was him desperately trying to walk things back. And it's because you have politicians around the country in these states banning the uh, genital removal amputation of children by doctors under the guise of gender affirmation. What I found interesting with this story, it was just what, two weeks ago, that Jane Fonda called for murder of pro-lifers on The View. So let me just ask you guys, The View, prominent morning talk show with millions of watchers on network television, runs an episode where, some, where a prominent personality says, we need the right to abortion, gets asked, okay, well, aside from voting and protesting, what can you do? She says murder. And then they laugh. And what did you say? She said murder. And they're like, she's joking, everyone. She's joking. And then a week or two later, a guy comes on and says, we're already in a civil war. This is mainstream corporate network television advocating for murder and saying we're in a civil war. Mm -hmm. At what point, you know, I, I feel like everyone thinks that a house fire starts by you sitting in a room, then boom, the house is just in flames. Every single room is on fire. You're like, whoa, my house is on fire. Like they don't realize that it could be a tiny little kindling yep. on your curtains and you can watch it for five minutes as it slowly grows and then 10 minutes and then 20 minutes and now the wall's on fire and now it's run away. And then, and then 10, 20 minutes later, now half your building gets consumed because it's exponential growth. When we're watching network television advocate for murdering people for being pro-life, but ha ha ha, it's just a joke. And then later you get a guy coming out being like, we're already in a civil war. At what point does someone just say, you know, the house is on fire. It, it, we're, we're in it. It's been a couple of years. There's been violence. It's on fire. Oh, I'll say it. The house is on fire. It is. It is. It is. It's kind of burning down. We're at that. It's not just like a kindling. It's not just the wall. We're at that point where we are close to having no united place for everybody to live under the same roof. And we desperately need people to put down the flames if we want to be able to maintain that. The question is, do we want to maintain that? Do we want to live together? You know, I'll, I'll tell Billy this. My wife and I have proudly been a part of legislation we helped get passed in Tennessee to ban these transgender surgeries, their sex changes, it's mutilation of somebody's genitals, and to ban the hormone treatments for kids and puberty blockers. So basically, the law essentially is you have to wait till you're 18 to make decisions, okay? Um, I don't think that's too wild. I think honestly, if it was my personal opinion injected into it, people would wait a lot longer or never have it done because I think that there's an underlying cause that really needs to be seen. But in Billy's case, I will say this. He loves to wear dresses and I just have a general rule. I have two rules. One is I, I don't um, ever answer emails from people who put pronouns in their thing. I don't care if they're offering me a million dollars, I'm not answering them. The other one is I don't take advice or take seriously men who wear dresses. Billy loves to wear dresses, so I'm just gonna disregard what he says. But in terms of what you said, on the Civil War front, we're, we're, yeah. we're at that point where they have, they have lit the fire. I'm wearing jeans. I'm okay so with that. You're jeans are cool. Yeah, I'll listen to okay. you. Yeah, don't put what if, a dress what, what on. What about though. what about women wearing jeans? They're cool, right? They're cool. Yeah, but you yeah. put a dress on. I am out. I'm, <laughs> I'm out. And no, actually, I'll listen to Ian. I will just we'll put up a wall here. I, I had a similar thought. It wasn't that I didn't know he wore dresses, but I he I don't know it. who this guy is, so I don't. I'm not going to take him seriously. I mean, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about us being at war, about the world ending, about horror That's, and trauma, and like I don't give a fuck. Like, it's I, not. It's it's not. You that. have it's, some sort of established it's reason. The view. It. It's them on the view with him going yeah they've got oh, a, yeah they've no, got a track and, and by the way when they stupid. said she was joking she said had her face going no i'm not yeah and she looks and around I, like well well no. no i'm not yeah and by the way can we pull up pictures of him i don't know i'm not like in control of this show but if we can pull up pictures of his dresses i, mean, I was just i would like to remind people if we i mean get a I picture of him in his dresses that this is what the left takes this is what seriously they have on, as an intellectual okay so color. <laughs> that they take seriously but a that, guy but, but like this and that and that's and that's and look i don't care the issue is their worldview is so different. There is no point at which we bring them together. Everyone, I, I'm, I'm, look, the last thing we want is national divorce. China would was, was take over the world. Yeah, yeah well, would, it's already happening. Lunch. They got to deal with Russia. The BRICS nations are talking about working with, with the Saudis. You've got Saudi, Saudi Arabia, they're going to be trading oil and yuan. We are losing. It's happening because we have, you know what, man? We've been defeated. 
Put it simply, no China, way. dude. We are very that's, close. That's the We're on the mentality is the defeat. We're on the we, 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 we have a country run by a family that is doing deals with China. I'm They're not running sh- it, though. It's a banking establishment that's running. Sure. It. And China's winning. And the petrodollar is failing. And, and uh, for, for better or for worse, America's standing as the unipolar power is done. You could say winning, but I don't think it's done. I don't think it's over. I mean, yes, the, definitely I, I the liberal economic the US, order. The U.S. empire is done. The liberal economic order. It's really the British empire. But yeah, the U.S. economic it's, order. I think, I think the we United States will exist. It will continue. But what I see happening right now is TikTok, for instance, Chinese company, and it's telling our kids, you, you're getting that dude who's saying, who's, who's, he does those videos where he's like, leave your parents. Jeffrey Marsh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, I created a Patreon so that you can send messages to me privately. It's you know disgusting. what I mean? Disgusting. And you get people like Dylan Mulvaney. We went over Dylan Mulvaney's TikTok and it's sad. Because when he started making content, he was, it's clear he was trying to figure out what would get him views. Mm-hmm. Animal content, talking about Broadway, LGBT content. And then he made a non-binary video, million views. Then he comes out as trans, three million views. And from there, he's getting millions upon millions of views. It's obvious all he wanted, in my opinion at least, was the attention. Mm-hmm. In China, TikTok is science and education. So what I mean to say is when we've been defeated is that the people who believe in America, the people who want America to be strong are being fought from within by people who have no principles, no morals, and just want to win. Nothing, apparently. They want to castrate children. They want to sterilize children. They want to abort their kids. They want the government to spend money in, in, uh, indefinitely into oblivion for hyper, to generating hyperinflation. AOC's advocated for deficit spending health care, which would just destroy the economy overnight. And we are fighting with them Instead of China, who's engaging in the Belt and Road Initiative, who's doing oil exploration for decades now in Africa and South America. So I should say this. It's not over yet. Fine. Fair point. But China is doing all of these things. Now, they do have economic problems. It's not like we're doing we're doing nothing. But China and Russia do a deal. China's doing oil deals with Saudi Arabia. What I'm saying is the domino has been flicked over to end the petrodollar and a unipolar world led by the United States. And it's because... Our leaders are people like Joe Biden. Donald Trump could reverse this. And Donald Trump was doing it in the right way. Securing our borders, bringing back jobs. Uh, The economy was booming. That's the right way to save America. Joe Biden is flying on Air Force Two with his son to negotiate private equity deals while working for the U.S. government and then getting his brother. uh, 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 Let me slow down. While overseeing the Iraqi invasion, the Iraqi invasion, his brother happens to get lucrative construction contracts. I'll put it that way. Or flying to Ukraine and engaging in an illegal quid pro quo to get a prosecutor fired who just so happened to be investigating a company his son was on the board of. That's what we have in leadership right now. So if China is expanding rapidly and doing these deals to subvert the United States and internally we're just fighting each other, that's why I say we've been defeated. Yeah, that would be the end if we just fight each other as the ship sinks. Uh, And here's the point. Billy Porter goes on The View and says children should have their testicles removed surgically. Why won't Republicans let us do this? And to me, in my worldview, I'm like, are you people insane? There is no logical reason. Let Let me phrase it this way. Let's take a logical assessment of what they call gender affirming care. A person comes to me and says that they will harm themselves and their own life unless a doctor surgically removes their hand. Do you know what we would do to that person? It's called a 5150. They get placed on a temporary psychiatric hold to make sure they don't harm themselves. Amanda Bynes was walking around Los Angeles naked and she got put on a 5150 and she wasn't hurting anybody. She was just naked. Then you get these people who come out and they've been saying it for years. If we don't amputate the genitals of these children, they'll kill themselves. And I'm like, well, I don't care if they're kids or adults. Anybody who threatens that You put them on a psychiatric hold to make sure they don't hurt themselves. You don't amputate their body parts. That was the number one argument against the bill we got passed in Tennessee was we had these people come in and say, basically, you guys want to kill children. We're like, okay, first of all, that is insane. But secondly, what other thing do we operate under this assumption where we say, oh, we're going to let patients dictate care as long as they go and threaten us with suicide? And what are we teaching kids about the future? Are we teaching these kids that if they have a, let's say, boyfriend or girlfriend who threatens to commit suicide, that they need to do whatever that person says and stay with them to prevent their suicide because suddenly you're responsible for the bad behavior or bad actions of other people? And what do we do if it's a kid with anorexia? Because by the way, anorexia has a higher suicide rate Mm -hmm. 
than these kids who say they're trans. And so do we say, you know what, kids with anorexia, we're gonna go ahead and give you liposuction, we're gonna give you lap band, because that's suddenly gonna make everything better. If we mutilate you further and destroy your mind further, that's gonna suddenly possibly make a couple of you happy. No, we would never do that. We understand how damaging that could be. And so we have a responsibility as adults to tune out threats. No good parent listens to their kid throw a tantrum and goes, I'm gonna give in now because you threatened to well, do something. Yeah, some, I, some do. And and this is the point that I've I made. I said good parents. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> some parents do. It's I, I've explained the woke stuff as the mother in the ice cream shop and the kid's screaming, I want two scoops. And the mother's going, okay, okay, please, just please stop yelling. Oh, you're yelling in my ear. Oh, please give him ice cream. Yep. I had a personal experience where I dated a girl that was suicidal and I tried to be there for her. You can't, at least from my experience, it didn't wasn't effective. It couldn't stop it. She tried to kill herself. There's nothing I could do about it. I just had to live my life. And it was like, of course, me going and living my life was the day she did it, but that doesn't mean that it wouldn't have happened if I just sat there crying in the room next to her, waiting for her to figure it out one day. Like, you can't, man, and it's not your fault if they do that. All you can yeah. do is love people, give them the tools, and sometimes loving them means doing hard things and things they may not like, you know? And I think that's the truth of it. And I think what Tim said is absolutely true. If you have a child who's genuinely threatening to commit suicide, if you don't chop off their genitals, you need to get them psychiatric care and you need to get it to them urgently. Instead, they're affirming all of it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. if, if body dysmorphia is a real thing. I brought it up on the on the Rogan podcast with Dorsey and Vijigate. Because I, 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 I I, I've done the research on it. I'm like, there are people who will stage accidents to get body parts amputated. Mm -hmm. There was one story I read about a guy who cut a tree down and then as it was falling, he put his arm under it so that it would crush his arm to force an amputation because he wanted his arm removed and the doctors would not do it. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.